The Functional Silo Syndrome Corporations have sets of silos just like those that dot America's rural landscape. Silos make their presence known through the structure of management systems and the behavior of employees. The silos of the various corporate functions, marketing, purchasing, sales, etc., create formidable barriers that frustrate attempts to carry out corporate-wide changes. Each silo gradually develops its unique culture, which is reflected in buzzwords and terminology not easily understood by members of other silos. Because a culture is circumscribed by its language, inter-silo communication is difficult. Although the silos are separated functionally, each one tries to keep tabs on any other silo whose function might influence its own. Marketing tries to anticipate finances edicts. Service tries to second-guess sales. Some silos develop an early detection and warning system so they can be the first to learn what is going on in corporate headquarters or to identify the business strategy of competing silos. Others protect their autonomy with organizational armor paint to prevent intervention and penetration by hostile silos. This insulation also prevents silo residents from escaping or fraternizing with the enemy. Some silos have selective conversations with other silos, employing a moat and drawbridge system to control who will enter and who will leave. This approach also prevents the serfs from coming and going, except during official shift changes when the bridge is down. Other silos equip themselves with intimidating weapons. Although these silos are armed for self-protection, if a competing silo makes an unfriendly overture, the warring mentality of the commanding general often leads to fatal blows. When a silo is destroyed, some functions are left unattended. Before the corporation discovers that it can function well without the services of the stricken silo, the aggressor declares, I am in charge, and hastens to confiscate the duties of the vanquished silo, thereby adding prestige and clout to its empire. The aggressor's success encourages other silos to engage in this behavior. Meanwhile, the presiding CEOs survey their domains with equanimity and pride from their executive suites. They think they know what's going on, but they are insulated from insurrection by the silo boss. The silo bosses, having witnessed the hapless fate of messengers, remain mute on developments that might concern the CEO. The view from within the silo is quite different. The natives are restless and frustrated by their circumscribed jobs. Wherever they turn, they are confronted by legalistic and bureaucratic constraints, unclear goals, lack of information, and the multi-layered status symbols that accompany a caste system. Their bosses have a procedure manual mentality and are reactive firefighters rather than problem-solving leaders. Management seems more interested in exacting obedience and preventing contamination from other silos than in developing a chain of customers.